let's take a look at the layer reference functionality that is new in the 2025 release. And layer references are quite an awesome way to create procedural effects for your asset texturing projects. So for example, I have this peeling paint effect here. And it's basically all driven by this mask. So I can peel it completely or also get rid of the peeling so we don't have any paint peeling here. And yeah, let's take a look how we can build that. Let me turn off the ray tracing. And as you can see, we have quite a few layers on that, but it's not as complicated as it may appear now. So maybe let's just delete all of those and let's check how we can build that. So let's start clean. This is my mesh. And at first I'll... Yeah, I'll take just this rust material here maybe. Or let's maybe also check for a different metal which could fit. Um, what do we have here? Maybe just this iron flakes material. Yeah, I think this is the same that I had before. But let's mask it a bit. So I use a mesh projected mask on that. Then I'll... Yeah, let's look for a nice crunch. Maybe spot 7. Let's adjust it. And I want to have mainly rust. So not so much metal visible. Just mainly rust. Yeah, like that. And yeah, then let's add our first paint layer. So this would be our paint. I want to have it, yeah, grayish. Let's also enable roughness. I want to have it rough. Also non-metallic. And let's also... Let's also apply the normal here. So we don't have any effect from the underlying layers. So at first I want to make this paint layer a bit nicer. Actually I need a bit of height. But we will adjust that later as well. So let's first add a new multi-channel layer. Set it to maybe a brownish color. Maybe like that. Let's add... Oh, actually, let's make a layer reference for this one first. So let's just see how we want to have our first mask. So I use a mesh projected mask as well. Um, maybe add a... I think Spots 2 was quite nice for that. Like this. Let's turn that off here first. And let's adjust that. Maybe a slight blur. Let's bump up the brightness fully. Let's play a bit with the balance and the contrast. Don't want to have too much. Yeah, looks quite good. Um, then I also want to have that influenced by my AO. So I add a new mesh projected mask and choose my AO from my package, which was well, this one here, I think. I set it to UV projection and also have to adjust that. So as you can see, we are getting this effect here. I also want to have full contrast nearly. Then let's check like this maybe. Let's blur it slightly. So we have AO influence and when I now go in here and make it like this. You can see our AO influence. And let's slightly adjust our mask. Maybe let's give it a bit of blur as well. Not too much. Maybe like that. Let's maybe also use the levels on this mask, so I need to get it here.
like this maybe. And we also add a few scratches on top. So again, mesh projected mask. And let's look for scratches. Let's take this scratches three. And we need a high, quite high scale and also set this to subtract here. Let's get rid of the distortion, not completely maybe. Let's overwrite that to maybe 24. Okay, so now I have my mask ready and I'll use this layer at reference to add a layer reference. So we will be referencing our mask here from this one. Then I go to our newly created layer. As you can see, it's not masked. And I just need to go to here at mask and use this reference generator here. Then I choose my layer. Maybe I should have named it nicer. But anyway, let's use the internal mask. And as you can see, this is masked out now. So it doesn't influence the underlying layer, but just our paint layer here. And now I use a mesh projected mask again. And I don't know, maybe let's use spots seven. Let's also set it up a bit. Maybe let's adjust the scale a bit. And let's also go to our layers here and use roughness and make it rough. Let's add a new layer, multi-channel layer again, and we want to have height information only. And let's set it to subtract, I think. Then let's use our reference generator again and reference the same mask. Then I go in and use a mesh projected mask again. And I add a smudges crunch. Let's set it up a bit. Maybe let's get rid of the base detail a bit. Then let's use this wipe clean. Maybe change the seed. Let's add a bit of the base detail again. Um, let's maybe decrease the um, the influence here or the blend opacity. Yeah, and then for the peeling paint, we're going to create a new multi channel layer again. Let's get rid of the color. Let's set the height. Then let's reference our previous mask again. Then we're going to use a mesh blur on that. So as you can see, this blurs the mask a bit. And then we basically want to subtract our previous mask from that. So we're going to take a reference generator again, reference our previous mask. Let's set it to subtract, I think. actually to multiply. Let's maybe play a bit with the levels here. Let's subtract the height. Let's go back and let's see what this is doing. So we basically have our effect going. Let's maybe go back to our main paint layer here and let's adjust the height a bit.
And then let's see what the mesh blur can do for us here. And then let's add a reference for this one again, as I want to have the outlines basically and um, get a new effect going so we can break this a bit up. So I'm going to add a new multi-channel layer here. Uh, get rid of my base color, just use height, set it to subtract. I use my reference generator and let's maybe call that cracks or peeling paint. Then I go back here, use the mask reference on peeling paint, use the internal mask again. Then I go here to my mesh projected mask and let's look for cracks. So I add my cracks. As you can see, they are quite big, so I need to adjust the count. Um, let's override it to maybe something like that. Set this to subtract. This to multiply, actually. And then we're going to need to reference our first layer again. And set it to, I think multiply is correct. Right, multiply is correct. So you can see this is quite a slight effect. But yeah, we are basically finished here and we could go in and add more effects on our paint, for example. So if I don't like that, I can go to my yeah, mesh projected mask again. I think this is my most used mask. As you can get quite awesome effects with all of those grunges and noises here. And let's use, where's my fractal sum? Fractal sum. Let's set it up a bit. Let's use some custom gain. Maybe let's go back here. So yeah, that's basically it, I guess. And as you can see, we were quite fast and we have quite an awesome effect going here. And yeah, we can just use this mask, for example, or this one. And adjust our effect. We could also save this as a layering material and reuse it on different projects. So we just need to close all of that. Then select all of our layers. Um, let's use the layer group here. Let's call it peeling paint. Then when I right click, I can add this to my library as a prefab material. And here I can basically then just reuse it on all of my projects. And we could also add more mask to that, for example. So I think this is my main paint layer, right? Right. Um, I could, for example, add a um, mesh mask painting. And the order here is really important. So when I add a mask, I have to make sure that it's um, under my reference here. Let's set that to subtract. Let's maybe go in and change our brush. Um, let's maybe use a box. Yeah, why not this? Um, I have my box settings here and I can make it more like this. And yeah, then I could basically paint and adjust my mask like I would like to. Maybe it's better to use a grunge here. 
for this one. So um, I think this cracked crunch is quite nice. Let's give it a vignette. Maybe let's adjust that a bit. Yeah, then I could just paint my mask when I think there is not enough. And yeah, then paint like that. Or when I set it to black here, I can get rid of it. And yeah, so many possibilities with this new feature. I think it's quite awesome. And yeah, I think that's it for the video, guys. And if you have any questions left, just let me know in the comments. So thanks for watching and see you next time.